Welcome back. Mission 5, Guiding of the Soul. Go to the destination before the power of the melancholy soul fades away. Now, since we're going to be on the clock in this mission, I'll mention up front I've bought a new ability. It's called Air Hike. It allows us to jump without, double jump without touching a wall. Now, for reasons we don't yet understand, the melancholy soul is lit up like a fireball. And there's another shadow cat that wants a piece of us. But we're on the clock here, so that's the fast way to kill a shadow cat. And this is why the pistols are awesome. I said that I was just saying the pistols are awesome because they let you float in the air and avoid his attacks, but also the pistols are awesome because they give you the range to actually kill him like that. The first time I did that, I was completely blown away, you know, I was just trying to be clever and stand on the spike. I never for a second imagined that the game designer would also think that that was clever and reward it with giving me the fastest possible way to kill that enemy. But I did want to show you something in our inventory, so let's take a quick peek at that, since the clock stops while we're in here. That amulet that just saved our life from the giant armored guy is in our inventory. It says here, a memento of Dante's mother. In the back is an engraving, Virgil and Dante. And I believe that there's actually a connection between these two items. And I'll explain that when the story reveals the elements you need to know. I don't want to spoil anything. I think there's a connection. But back to the the earlier subject of the being able to defeat the shadow cat like that. It just it makes you feel like you've you've done something. Uh, wrong gun for the job. Like you're not just able to, to win, you're able to win with style. These guys are pretty hard to see, but those are sin size as opposed to the sin scissors we fought previously. They don't have very much health, but their size do a, a lot of damage and have homing attacks, so they sort of balance out. Rank S. Well, as you can see, I've, I've played this level a couple times before, so I, I got a rank S for clearing a three minute level in five and a half minutes. I'm beginning to suspect that time has absolutely nothing to do with uh, how well you are ranked on a mission. I think it's probably just the number of hits you take versus how many orbs you collect. Mission 6, Evil of the Waterways. Defeat the guiding or the evil guardian and acquire the guiding light. I suppose maybe I could have powered up, but I'd rather just power through. fragment. So yeah, well, I guess, okay, first things first, there are two things I want to say right now, one of which is, you know, I was hoping that stylish action, or whatever you want to call it, was going to become a genre, but really, this game has been out ten years, and I don't think there are ten games that live up to its legacy. You know, Devil May Cry 2 certainly didn't, 3 and 4 I would say did, you know, Ninja Gaiden, came out I think in 2003, so a couple years later. Um, and of course Bayonetta. But that's why when I mentioned it in the first installment, this game broke my heart, is because it showed me amazing possibilities that would never be fulfilled. The rest of the industry would just forget about. And if the spider wasn't bad enough, now we know what he eats apparently. Ah, oh, get off of me! Uh-oh. When he's 
starts pointing his rear end at you like that, he's about to bug bomb you. Alright. Who else is alive still? So. Ah! I love when they do those little circular flights though. If you stand in the right place, yeah, you can get dauntated. Spin. But yeah, fighting flies and shooting maggots and cockroaches, not so great. But the other thing I wanted to say earlier was, this is called Evil of the Waterways, this mission. Why on earth would you build a thing like this? No one to lock on to, so. I think there was still one bad guy alive in there, but I wasn't gonna go hunt him down. But yeah, why would you have ankle deep water all through the bottom of your castle? It sounds it seems to be like a maintenance nightmare and serving no practical purpose. There are a couple little uh, passageways that if we check the map you can see they sort of connect in the center here. Technically, they dead end, and there are some health orbs here, and since we don't need the health, they turn into money for us, which is kind of nice, but you'll see in a bit why it's nice to leave those orbs alone so that you can use them a bit later. Blue torches, always a good sign. second shattering. There's a barrier back here. I don't know why they bothered to put it since you can't escape from that blue cage, but regardless, here it is. And here's the guiding light. A sunburst with a baby's face. A key that shines in ardor. Ardor means, let's see, either intense fiery passion or literally it just an intense heat. They use that word a lot in this game, though. It slowly drains the possessor, the power of the possessor. And it also ends mission six. Ah, rank me, my old friend. I'll see you next time. <laughs>